Hey, Foot Clan, the NFL Draft is right around the corner, and I want to encourage you to head over to ultimatedraftkit.com. we got some pre-order bonuses, including early access to those dynasty and rookie rankings as soon as the NFL Draft is over. You also get $10 to fantasychamps.com and some other sweet perks. Check it out at ultimatedraftkit.com. Hey, this is Austin Eckler, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Almost, almost. Almost. Welcome almost. in. Pretty good. Okay. Almost. Welcome into the show. I wasn't sure, but I figured I'd give it a go. Welcome in, Andy, Mike, and Jason. Tuesday, March 31st, 2020, everybody's favorite year. (laughs) Yeah, it's been great. Pants check. Jason, are you currently wearing pants? Uh, hmm. Are basketball shorts considered pants? Yes. Yes, they are. We have adjusted. Are basketball shorts considered pants? Are they Hold considered on. pants if that is all that you're wearing? <laughs> so you're wearing a polo shirt. Mm-hmm. You got to keep it fancy up top, Mike. And basketball shorts. Basketball shorts only. So here's a little... <laughs> oh, wait. wait. Are we, this is a commando situation? Yeah, this is... this is Those are my underwear now. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's my life. <laughs> Things have really... Uh, standards oh. have changed at, at a time like this. We're excited to have you with us. We have some news, free agency winners and losers on the show, some buy-sell. Uh, we have a new employee that oh. started today. Now, I, I'll be honest with you. We moved him to Arizona, <laughs> and today Arizona issued their official shelter-in-place stay-at-home order. We moved him here to work collaboratively, and now he gets to work remotely. <laughs> but we did hire another Andy and I can testify, I, I got a chance to spend a few hours on, on on Zoom today, working with him. Great guy, very excited to have him on the team. He definitely got up for a second and was wearing basketball shorts uh, mm. to walk out of the room. So we are all in the same company outfit is all I'm, Whoa, well, all well, I'm trying to say. I'm in sweatshorts. Okay. Yeah, that's, 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 that that's what I'm in. That's... I'm in that too. Do you have yeah. underpants on though, Mike? Yes, because I'm, I'm not a filthy animal. <laughs> See, it seems like like to me, I've done that, you know? If I take like a second shower, sometimes I'm like, I don't want to go through like another new pair of underwear, so I just go, you know, just the uh, the don't, nighttime shorts. Don't want to go through another one what, that I have to throw into the laundry machine? Yeah, That's exactly. That's pretty much what I'm saying. And uh, it, it doesn't really pay off. Like, it's not a good thing. Like, it's not as comfortable. Whew, I don't know. I don't know what you, life you're living because I am comfy and free. How my often man. are you moving around, Jason? Uh, as little as possible. Okay. Well, then of course you're fine. There you go. All right. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. I promise you, if you head over to YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers, waste you, up. We will not pan down. Waste there will up. Be, we will not be panning down. Subscribe. Click the bell. Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. Twitter at the FF ballers. And we are giving away a signed Keenan Allen jersey right now at FootClanGiveaway.com. Don't forget about that. We're going to do some buy-sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, Buy or Sell, Dynasty League question. Are you buying or are you selling Odell Beckham Jr. in a Dynasty League? Mm. This one Several is year Turns in a row bust. 28 yeah. in November. Uh, I wouldn't say several years in a row. In 2018, he was the wide receiver six in fantasy points per game, but you only got 12 games. So if you want to count that as a bust, that's Whenever you have to qualify, he was this 12 games. points per game. Yeah, but I mean, you, you didn't have him for the... I think that was no playoffs, right? And so nobody won with Beckham. Recovering from off-season core surgery supposedly played through the injury throughout 2019, finished as the wide receiver 26 and 16 games last year, 1,000 yards, four touchdowns, 133 targets. We all know about the talent, but are you buying or selling him in a dynasty league? 
What do you think? I, I can tell you what I'm definitely not doing in a dynasty league, and that is I'm not selling Odell Beckham Jr. in a dynasty league. His value has never been as low, and so then you could argue, well, then he should be a buy. I'm, yeah, wouldn't I'm, he be a buy then? Uh, you know, I, I, I view him like we're playing buy or sell, right? So we got to pick one. And if I have to pick one, it would be a buy. But in truth, he's just a hold for me. He's not a guy that I think I need to go after. But if you're saying Odell Beckham in a dynasty league, is he valuable for a long time? I, I still think he is. He's currently 27. So like you said, he'll be 28 before the season. He's got a young, hopefully still up and coming quarterback in Baker Mayfield. And, you know, it's nice to see that he got the surgery, right? Because a lot of times people are like, ah, oh, you know, I had this back problem. I had this injury this year, but then nothing happens. And there you just hope it gets better. This was proof that, look, he you don't have surgery for no reason. He was hurt um, and there was something to fix. And so, I, you know, I think brighter days are ahead. And because he's such a big name, that actually matters. It's kind of like we talk about draft stock. Um, or money and contracts and it, what people have earned, those things necessitate the ball going to that player. And so does being a gigantic, marketable name. Odell Beckham isn't going to stop getting his targets for many, many, many years. So if I think he's, he's going to be very relevant. And if you buy him, you know, if you're selling him right now, you're selling him at his lowest value ever. If you look at the – now, we, we have reception perception as part of the, the ultimate draft kit – it's interesting when you look at his success by route and how dynamic he was in 2018, the year I said that, you know, 12 games, wide receiver six and fantasy points per game. And wide uh, In 2019, he wasn't winning on as many of his routes. Now, maybe that speaks to the injury being an actual issue. He wasn't winning on, you know, several of these routes that he was best in league type of numbers. I will buy Beckham. Uh, from a fatigued dynasty owner, Mike, where do you weigh in? I yeah, I tend to be on the buy side as well. It's interesting. So I'm looking at the reception perception. I'm just trying to you know be stat analytical doctor of some sort here. And we're, his biggest downturn were on the dig route and the out route, both of which require you know like a full stop and turn. And he had core surgery, like a core muscle. It's a I, I don't know. Maybe he that that type of of turning was just was painful, so he wasn't able to be as explosive. That's all just a hypothetical situation, but it sounds pretty good to me. He he is when he's on, he's so dominant. Like he's when he's on, he's a top three wide receiver in the NFL, and it does feel like there's this weird fatigue with him because uh, I'll, I'll say let's. He was a bust in two of the last three years, and it's only in the the in 2017 he played four games. He busted because of injury. 2018 when he was great, and Jason's saying, "Well, he busted. It's because he got hurt." I mean, it's, so it's it's not like Odell Beckham is is bad. He still had over a thousand yards this year. It's just the expectations of him are so very very high. I so I'm I'm. Talking through it, I still lean on the side that I would be buying him. If I would not be selling him, I'd be buying. There are very few players in the NFL that can be game breakers at any moment. Even last year in an ugly season with a lot of disappointment, there were a couple games where, you know, I remember that Monday night game, he took a slant route, went to the house. He can still do that sort of thing. It's interesting. Uh, uh, we had, looking at the numbers, Fewest targets per game of his career at 8.3, which was still two targets more per game than any wide receiver in Minnesota. So you still have yeah. a high volume target type of player. Um, but now you have Kevin Stefanski coming over. So it'll be interesting. I still think we all side on the kind of cautious buy side. Now, know? I want to specifically make, sh make sure this is clear. I am a, I'm a cautious buy or a hold uh, I'm not personally a sell in dynasty leagues, but this is dynasty only because in truth, Odell Beckham is a very good player. He's a very high profile player and he's young enough. Those three things are going to make sure he has relevance going forward in a redraft league. I will not be buying where he will end up that I am pretty confident in because his big name that helps him get some targets also helps him skyrocket up average draft positions. So I'm, this is why it's a weird buy for me. 
um, because I'm kind of more anti Odell Beckham in fantasy, but in a dynasty league where you've got so many years of, of a player when he's 27 years old and he's still a, a great player, I'm going to just hold on to him. Or if you could buy him cheap, I will, but come draft season, he'll still be drafted, uh, you know, well, well, well above Jarvis Landry. Like I, I have no doubt that he will end up being drafted much earlier, despite the fact that he performed worse than Jarvis this this last year, and I, I just don't want to gamble. Uh, you know, when two of the last three years have have had major injury problems. If you wanted to sell him based on injury history, and you're just scared and you don't want the headache, I'm okay with that. The problem is you're just not going to get as much as you should for that talent. That's why I want to find that dynasty owner that's had him for the entire duration of the of the league, because owning Odell, it, it's not been a good experience based on your expectations. So if I could take advantage of that person, that's where I would lean. That was buy yourself from pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS, get $10 credit. Let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. All right, the Eagles have exercised uh, contract options on both Carson Wentz and Alshon Jeffrey. Can't get enough Alshon. They didn't really have a choice with the amount of money they were paying <laughs> Alshon. He's coming off list Frank surgery, questionable for training camp. They didn't have a choice with the fact that they have no other receiving options. I no, mean, they don't. It's Alshon Jeffrey, and they extended Zach Ertz. They picked up his, uh, they exercised his 2021 option. So those two guys are there, but you don't know what you have, you know, in, in last year's rookies. And pff, I, I expect them to make a splash in the draft this year. They, they just have to. Mike, did you have any thoughts on Jeffrey coming back, getting paid that kind of money? Expectations? Uh, my expectations for Alshon are very minimal. <laughs> he just it, it like if you're talking about Odell Beckham, of you're scared of Beckham getting hurt all the time. Like Alshon Jeffrey then would be literally the boogeyman <laughs> if Beckham is your standard for being scared of injured players. I think the only positive narrative you can craft for Jeffrey is just simply how much Carson Wentz loves to throw him the football when he is healthy sure. in terms of that connection. But yeah, it's, it's, it's tough if he's going to miss some of training camp. Demarcus Robinson re-signed by the Chiefs. One-year deal, $2.3 million. Okay. It's good for Mahomes. Yeah. And Rob Robinson will splash. He'll, he'll hit a couple 60-yard touchdowns. I saw a report saying that the uh, – that Sammy Watkins is expected to be kept around, and that just doesn't make any sense to me with his contract. Uh, he is still there. When I w the first thing I thought of when Demarcus Robinson resigned is, oh, this definitely means Sammy has to take less money or just get cut. Uh, but then I I read something from a beat writer just saying that you know they're expected to keep him. Have Have you guys had you know for seen Sammy? any insight? Yeah, for Sammy Watkins because that's the real question to me about Demarcus Robinson resigning is. Are they just keeping the entire core intact, or are they letting Sammy Watkins go? I can't imagine that Watkins can stay without taking a significant pay cut because you'd have to redesign the contract around Sammy Watkins. I mean, he's a $21 million cap hit for 2020. Oof. So he plays if you release right? him, <laughs> yeah, right. If you release him, they're seven million dead, but you save $14 million for your cap space. So um, oh, this just in, Kansas City has the least amount of cap space of all 32 teams. <laughs> yeah, and, and, he, and Watkins has been tweeting as, though, as if he's not going to be playing for the Chiefs. He is. You're right. He has one right now, but uh, something crazy significant is going to have to happen for him to hang around. We've got some more impressive signings. The Lions have signed Geronimo Allison to a one-year deal. <laughs> Mediocre signing of the week. One year, one million dollars, Mike. I think it qualifies. Oh, they, yeah, they stole him from a division rival. Oh, yeah. what a what a bold move, Detroit. Got into a bidding war. Ended up at the one million dollar mark. <laughs> uh, uh, I think they overpaid. Oh gosh. Oh, um, oh. Yeah, I mean, I'm. It doesn't matter for fantasy. Greg Zerline. Cowboys have signed kicker Greg Zerline. Okay. Wait, what? I missed that. You did? Yeah. I, Three year, seven point five million dollar contract, Mike. Greg the they leg. Got Greg the leg? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's a pretty phenomenal signing. For fantasy, it kinda 
I, I, th I think this is negative in the sense that usually we view the Rams offense as higher powered than the Cowboys and thus better for fantasy points for kickers and all that. But I mean, you look at last year on a points per game basis, say, give me Dallas. Yardage, Dallas outdid the, the Rams. So maybe this is, maybe this is actually a, an upgrade for, for Greg Zerline. All right, the Buccaneers, uh, more news out of Tampa. Bruce Arian says they are looking to add a pass-catching back in free agency. Not good for uh, Dare Agunbowale. It's not good for any of them. I mean, Not good for Ronald Jones. Yeah, I mean, Peyton Barber's gone, so it seemed like, well, maybe Ronald Jones can be it. But Bruce Arians needs his running back to be able to catch. So when I they think, draft J.K. Dobbins, it will be very no, exciting. I don't think they're spending a high capital pick. I think that Ronald Jones will end up with the majority of the work there. I really do. I, I am I am firmly in the camp that they will spend a high a high end pick. I mean, you have to get Tom Brady a pass catching back yeah. for his dump with that offensive line and the problems they have in so his. So what well, you want to make a little uh, little make it interesting? A little yeah. bit based on the rounds? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Top two. I don't think they'll spend the top uh you said top oh, you were, two? You, you were going to let me have three, weren't you? No, 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 no. I wasn't. Totally not. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Top, sure. top two yeah, I rounds? I can't believe you didn't say a day two Top pick. two rounds right, how, about, how about this? How about this? <laughs> I hadn't agreed. Water bed. You offered it. I'm the one that has to agree. That's true. A, if you a offer third it, round, A third round is agreement. a push. A third, a third round, round is a push. Uh, why would I agree to alter it? Because I was in the middle of talking. All right, fine. A third round, a third round is a push. <laughs> I was going to say the top three rounds. I didn't expect it. So um, it'll be fun. Interesting. To see the draft is on as planned, April 23rd through the 25th. Do you remember uh, Bruce Arians wanted to draft? I mean, granted, it, it, maybe it was the wrong move, but he wanted to draft Amir Abdullah in the second round. Like, yes, he Bruce did. Arians will draft a second round running back or influence his GM to make that move. So you're, done, you're, on, you're on team second round then, Mike? I'm you're on day two, yeah. All of their all of their signings and free agency have been focused on the defense. I think the draft is going to be focused on the offense. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. All Appreciate right. Any it. other news that you guys want to get into? I mean, I, I kind of cut you off there where you were saying that the draft is going to happen the 23rd through the 25th. We'll, we'll see what it actually looks like. It's having <laughs> the NFL to us, you know, look forward to having free yes. agency, the draft, this is a very welcome distraction from, a bunch of the real life uh, crises all around us. So I've, I've very much enjoyed being able to look at this and uh, look forward to kind of forgetting everything else while we watch this draft and, and start um, predicting the upcoming season. Before we get into our biggest winners and losers from free agency, I want to thank today's sponsor, Omaha Steaks. Ladies and gentlemen, you're at home. You need to eat by the meat. Right now, Omaha Steaks limited time stock up sale is available to help your family stock up on the food you love. OmahaSteaks.com. You enter the code FOOTBALLERS into the search bar. You'll get free shipping on orders of $69 or more. Stock up boxes include world famous Omaha Steaks, naturally aged to tenderness, trimmed to perfection, premium poultry and pork, tasty and easy to make side dishes, no work family meals, for your slow cooker or oven, skillet meals ready in 15 minutes or less, artisan desserts, much, much more. Omaha Steaks deliver guaranteed. They, they guarantee the quality and safety with every order. Stock up boxes are ready to ship right now in shipments of $69 or more. Get free shipping. I have been eating Omaha Steaks and Omaha Steaks burgers nonstop. They are Super, super delicious. There's never been a better time to stock up on Omaha Steaks. The stock up sale is going on right now with ready-to-ship packages and free shipping on shipments of $69 or more. Visit omahasteaks.com. Type footballers into the search bar to shop today. And hey, Foot Clan, we know that these times are a little bit crazy right now. That's why we have committed to make sure we're bringing fantasy footballers left, right, and center on our normal schedule, no matter what, from home or from the studio. But there is another podcast we do that you might not be aware of called the Spitballers Podcast. I know you listen to this and you go, man, they're funny. I know. Hilarious. I know. They're so funny. I can't even believe it. But we don't want to derail <laughs> our conversations on fantasy because that's what's most important here. So we do it over there. The Spitballers Comedy Podcast 
is simply us answering stupid questions, delving into things that can't possibly be real life but are. It is a ton of fun. We finish every episode with a draft. I believe we just did the most unsanitary items yes. uh, draft. Yeah, so, how about your uh, your basketball shorts? That wasn't one that of was, my options. It was, it was not draft. You could have been. Uh, been. But you, you got to check it out. It's also family friendly just like this show. So if you're, one, if you're going stir crazy like I am and you want to put something on fun for the whole family to gather around, listen to, or watch on YouTube, you can check it out everywhere that you get our podcast or you can check it out on YouTube, youtube.com slash spitballers. We're going to win. We're going to win. All right. We're almost into April. It's time to pick some winners and losers from free agency thus far. I don't know who wants to kick it off. I think I'm going to throw it to Mike. Uh, We're going to pick some winners first. All right. So my, I mean, the, my biggest winner, I mean, it's, it was really, really tough, honestly, for me to go between DJ Moore and Kenyon Drake as the biggest winner of this free agent slash all the movements that that uh, like the transactions that have taken place, but I went with Kenyon Drake. He's my he's my biggest winner. I think he is going to be absolutely outstanding in eight games with Arizona. He had 123 carries for 643 yards and eight touchdowns, 28 receptions on 35 targets. Now, I'm not calling for the efficiency that Kenyon Drake had to continue. And honestly, that like, that's not, that, that's not why I'm so excited. That's, that, that certainly helps you uh, feel a bit more confident, but it was the opportunities that Kenyon Drake had as the starting running back for Arizona, 15 and a half carries a game, four and a half targets. That's what he was averaging. He was averaging 20 opportunities per game. He was the running back three in points per game after he took over for Arizona Games when they won, they I mean they won a you know a couple games. <laughs> they won a couple games last year. Kenyon Drake, 20 plus carries in those games. Games when they're trailing, guess what? The targets go up. They are committed to Kenyon Drake after they were able to trade David Johnson away to the Houston Texans. The team is cap strapped right now, but they still committed over ten million dollars to have Kenyon Drake come back to this team. And I don't know if uh people had heard about this. The Arizona Cardinals also traded for DeAndre Hopkins. Yes. Yes, I actually just heard that as well. I, I want to remind people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the, look. The team is better now. The team gets better with DeAndre Hopkins. You have more scoring opportunities, more drives extended because you have a you have a superstar elite wide receiver that they got for basically free. Kenyon Drake was as much people. Kenyon Drake was as much of a fit in the positive sense in uh, the Kingsbury system as DJ wasn't, as David Johnson right. wasn't. There was just a congruency to I mean, he he didn't need acclamation. I mean, you remember his first game against San Francisco. Against San Francisco. Who had stopped everybody. Kenyon Drake was a perfect fit to come in and and make those um, you know, instinctual type of plays in that system. It just was a fit. I have been hearing a lot more hype about this offense. I've also heard the comparisons to Cleveland and the Browns and what they did in the offseason last year and the excitement for Cleveland may be manifesting in this excitement in Arizona. We'll see what happens. It's rare that the hype delivers entirely. That being said, Kenyon Drake is is being paid to have, uh, I mean, a huge role, right? Yes, for sure. And like I said, 20 opportunities a game. That's that's what I want from my running back and the Cardinals, even even if they're just like a, a middle of the pack scoring team, which this this offense has the ability to be a a top twelve scoring team. So I mean, you're talking massive upside, but even if they don't hit that upside, Drake is still he he's still going to be a running back one in my projections. Yeah, I, I agree completely. And one of the one of the, I mean, look, this is super early, but I've already been thinking about my guys. And, you know, as, as a Kenyon Drake truth or his entire career, right. Part of the thing that I like about him is I know how much people don't believe in him. I mean, they, you know, they've, you've got years of him uh, not really being great outside of a stretch when there were no other running backs healthy on the roster and Adam Gase had to use him as, as a dolphin. Otherwise, 
you know, when there's a player who's had a career and, and a lot of years of not having success, and then he's thrust into a position where we've seen a little bit of success, but it hasn't really happened. You know, you don't know for sure what's going to happen on a full workload on a 16 game basis. You're not going to have his average draft position, I believe, get out of control. I think there's going to be a lot of people talking him down, talking about not being oh, able to I don't handle think the workload. So. I don't but think so. I, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see. I I know how many people out there are anti Kenyon Drakers. Speaking yeah, of I mean, he, sixteen he, game pace, Jason, do you know what his sixteen game pace in Arizona was? Well, he I'm had sure to be over twelve hundred yards on the ground. I guarantee you touchdowns, that. Touchdowns, I believe, uh, thirteen hundred rushing yards and fifty six receptions. But that that is the you know. <laughs> To, to try to avert anybody's uh, Homer ambitions here, that is 100% the problem in question with Kenyon Drake is workload capability. I mean, he went sure. from an, his entire career, he's averaged, you know, like seven or eight attempts per game on the ground. In eight games in Arizona, he's up at 15.4 attempts per game over that eight-game span. Can he sustain that? Will the Cardinals uh, utilize more of Chase Edmonds than we expect? You know, we we don't think so, but we still haven't seen it. And there's been enough players that have had great efficiency at low volume that have diminished that you know that efficiency has diminished over time. So very, I think there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic. I think you're 100 percent right that he's a free agency winner, but just to try to uh, temper the uh, the expectations, I think there will be a lot of hype around them. Arizona's offense is already getting a lot of uh, publicity. You know, power rankings came out today. They're moving up as a wild card contender. Bunch of bandwagoners. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but um, did you have anything else you wanted to add on that one, no. Mike? Nope. He's going to be great. Jason, I'm I'm a big fan of one of your two winners here. So why don't you go ahead? So the two winners that I was pointing out, just basically packing them together because they're both middling meh tight ends, and that would be Hayden Hurst uh, and Jack Doyle. Now, I'm going to talk more about Jack Doyle real quick. Hayden Hurst, if you don't know who he was, he's a first-round draft pick from the Ravens two years ago, the same draft class that they got Mark Andrews. They drafted him ahead of Mark Andrews, but he was injured early. Mark Andrews took over and has the rapport and is, is awesome. It's better than Hayden Hurst, just flat out. And so they were able to trade after Austin Hooper went and signed with the Cleveland Browns. They were able to trade their essentially their backup tight end in Hayden Hurst to the Atlanta Falcons for like a second round pick. I think they gave some compensation back as well. But the opportunity for Hurst goes through the roof. I mean, you know, Austin Hooper was the tight end one in the weeks that he was healthy before injury most of the season last year. And, you know, the, the passing volume will be there for him. Hayden Hurst projected, obviously, as a great prospect. That's why he was a first round NFL draft pick. So I think, look, he's a huge winner, whether or not it ends up coming to fruition. I believe I'll probably just see him as a weekly streaming option in the right matchup. I don't think he's talented enough to just no, come I do. in. You do. You think he's that, talented he's enough? The, he loves him. He's the name that I think I, I, I was just excited to see him in here because the compensation they paid for him, the role Austin Hooper had, and the way that this offense has used tight ends, whether it was Tony Gonzalez long ago with Matt Ryan or Austin Hooper's evolution, I just think there's a great sleeper opportunity for Hayden Hurst you know, you can't go out and say, yes, it's going to happen. But from a uh, the tight end landscape, when we're looking at upside, like I'm very excited about Hayden Hurst and that athletic profile, even more than like, you know, I know Jack Doyle has an opportunity with Philip Rivers, but I don't know if I like him as much as Hayden Hurst. Yeah, it, look, I, I'm, I'm fine with either. My, the reason I put both of them together as middling tight ends is just because it it gives us two more tight end options in in such a gross position for fantasy next year that could actually be very relevant. Yeah. So on the other side, on Jack Doyle's side, you've got a guy who has had fantasy relevance in the past when he had Andrew Luck, um, who's coming. Look, he didn't go anywhere, but free agency has made him a huge winner because you had Eric Ebron, you know, who just two years ago had double digit touchdowns, leave the team. Uh, you you have obviously he lost Andrew Luck and and stunk this last year with Jacoby Brissett and also dealing you know with with other issues and injuries. But now I mean look at his look at Jack Doyle's career receiving percentage. Right comes in. Let me read you his his uh, catch percentage: seventy one percent, eighty one, eighty five, seventy eight percent, seventy four, seventy eight. He he's he's a good receiving tight end. Last mm -hmm. year fifty nine percent 
is what he was Ooh. able to receive from Jacoby Ooh. Brissett. Now you've got Philip Rivers coming in. And so you've got kind of the 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 trifecta, right? You have Eric Ebron leaving, Philip Rivers, who has always utilized the tight end coming in, is going to give far more accurate passes, much to my chagrin to say that. And then you have <laughs> Frank Reich, and this system is a system that has always leaned on tight ends. That's why Eric Ebron has had success there. Jack Doyle's had success there. We always, you know, freak out about Moali Cox and his gigantor nature. <laughs> but with Philip Rivers and Jack Doyle now being the primary tight end, uh, I think he'll be involved a lot. I think he'll be a very fantasy relevant player. So these two guys are my big winners in free agency. And hopefully, hopefully it means that the tight end landscape isn't just you have one of the top three or you're dead in the water. And there's a couple more options this year. To me, uh, the biggest winner is Drew Brees. Uh, I talked about the fit with Emmanuel Sanders. Sanders, I, you, you know, you look at Michael Thomas and that catch percentage that Michael Thomas has when targeted from Drew Brees. And then you give Drew Brees maybe, I don't know, a top five most sure-handed wide receiver in all of football on the other side in Emmanuel Sanders. It just seems like a perfect match for Drew Brees. Twelve, uh, I'm sorry, 14 of his 27 touchdown passes went to people, players lined up in the slot, whether it was Michael Thomas, Jared Cook, Jared Jared Cook. Cook or uh, Traquan Smith, Taysom Hill. It, that's a spot that uh, Emmanuel Sanders can thrive He's just so sure-handed, and it gives Drew Brees this baseline lifter, another target on the opposite side of Michael Thomas, the weapons that they have, Alvin Kamara out of the backfield. I think Drew Brees is positioned to be a top-tier fantasy option despite the age escalation problems that he has. I, you know, <laughs> he He's just set up for a Super Bowl run, and so I think he's the biggest winner getting Emmanuel Sanders. Drew Brees was like, it, I, it's it's interesting that people aren't talking about the season for fantasy purposes that Drew Brees actually had last year. I, I because of the injury, because of Is the that because why? of the injury, but I fantasy mean, if, finish. Yeah, but but if you look at him, he had one bus game. If you, uh, I'm removing the one where he tore the ligament in his hand. I'm not holding that against him. So, but other than that, he had one bust when he came back in week eight. Uh, against the Arizona Cardinals, from then on out, he ended up as the quarterback three. I mean, he he was awesome last year, and I think really broke the expectations for for what fantasy players have have come to expect from Drew Brees. Where you're like, yeah, he's he's a great quarterback, great real life quarterback. He'll end up as a low end quarterback one. So Jay, I'm as you're not like the Drew Brees fantasy poo pooer, but when I when I've tried to, you know, give him some some dap, give him some love of like we should be excited about Drew Brees and his fantasy performance. How do you feel about him being great last year and then going into this year with the addition of an of another great wide receiver? No, th this is this is a great time for Drew Brees. A couple years ago, as he was getting older, as this became more of a running and defensive team, I was down on Drew Brees' prospects because coming into those seasons that's when he cost the most. He was, you know, you had these giant name guys who were great for fantasy year in and year out. And so he was a, a highly drafted guy. Now he's old man Withers who was injured for part of the year last year. And I, I don't think people are super excited. I say what I want, Mike. <laughs> uh, As opposed to old man Rivers. Yes. Yes. Well, okay. you know, old men, they... With, no, it, it, it they do with, no, it they wither. Sense. They wither. Um, and but I don't think people are going to be you know climbing over one another to get Drew Brees in the draft. And I, I mean, look what Jared Cook did for him last year was fantastic. And I, I love Emmanuel Sanders. I, I've said for years, if you've ever been on one of our AMAs, and they're like, "Who's your favorite non-cardinal to watch?" It's always been Emmanuel Sanders. I just think he's phenomenal. And now, if he's the third option, or you know, a, a two A. A, you know, two A two B option with Jared Cuke, uh, then it's gonna be great. I mean, look, you know, you say, oh, he came back in week eight. That's still nine games he played, and in that stretch, he was on pace for forty four passing touchdowns and four interceptions. Now, I, I think Drew Brees is gonna be phenomenal yeah, and I, at a good value this year in the draft. That's the point. People will be crawling over one another to draft another winner of free agency, Kyler Murray, picking up DeAndre Hopkins, a second year in the system. They might be crawling over one another to pick up Josh Allen, who had a solid fantasy year and then picks up Stephon Diggs. They won't be doing that for Breeze because they won't be idealizing him the way that they will these other players. 
with the potential of being, you know, a number one or number two overall quarterback. But that's underestimating the value, I think, that Emmanuel Sanders will bring to the table, just being a sure-handed, another great option. Um, uh, they can put more trust in that passing game. I mean, we saw uh, the pendulum swing, obviously, from the massive touchdown year for Alvin Kamara on the ground to the minimal touchdown on the ground year last year. So that that's a concern to some degree. But when you have as many options as Breeze have, has, it, it's exciting. Other potential winners I want to bring up before we talk about losers. Um, you know, uh, I brought up Kyler Murray, Josh Allen. You know, Baker Mayfield picks up Austin Hooper. He picks up Jack Conklin on the offensive line. Yes. Uh, Gardner Minshew picked Loses up the Nick loss Foles. of Nick Foles. <laughs> yeah, that's great for him. Teddy Bridge, uh, Bridgewater ends up in a starting position, obviously, but also with Robbie Anderson. Uh, at the running back position, you've got, you know, Gurley out of town in Los so Darnell, Angeles. Darnell Anderson. Oh, famous. Look, if Yeah, if, if I could really convince myself and talk and talk myself into that Daryl Henderson will get the like the the majority of the timeshare for the Rams, he would easily be the 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 clear winner of free agency of just like on the last episode, I'm just not sure that that will be the case. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, he certainly has the highest upside in that backfield. Miles Sanders, you know, Jordan Howard's out the door. Miles Sanders has an opportunity there in Philly. Ronald Jones right now. We'll see how our bet turns out. But Ronald Jones has, look, I know that you guys were slow to accept any positive uh, anything from Ronald Jones. But obviously last year he had some very good games and uh, was very impressive. And then Marlon Mack obviously uh, has speak, an opportunity. Sorry to cut you off. I just want to speak that. I don't think I've accepted it yet. So when you say slow to accept, I take offense. <laughs> okay. You haven't accepted it yet. That's Thank good. You. I mean, our bet was for the first round, right? You said running back in the first round? Top 10. They're trading up. Top 10. Um, one of the guys that I, I brought up earlier in the month, T.Y. Hilton, gets yep. a reliable quarterback. Um, I think he's a free agency winner. And then what do you think about Blake Jarwin, Mike, as a winner at the oh, tight end position? Oh, be still my heart. Blake Jarwin's got an opportunity. He got money. It wasn't like top tight end this, money, but he's making a decent. This is an indie tight end bit. situation for Mike. He's into the indie tight ends. I look. And I, don't, totally. I don't mean Indianapolis. I mean no, like the bands, the, indie the, bands. The movies. He's, there's a total. He, yeah. Yeah. He, Film you festival know how much winner. I love I love Jack Doyle, so Jason having to sit over there and eat crow and talk him up, it's just warming the cockles of my heart. Blake Jarwin will be next. <laughs> yeah. Well, he does have an opportunity. He certainly does. Uh, so speaking Smith. of losers, okay. <laughs> just, I just wanted a professional segue there from Blake Jarwin, but uh, Jonah Smith is also a clear, is a clear winner. Tight end, Tennessee. All right. Let's talk about losers. Jason, All right. you seem like the right man to start. I'm starting. Okay, mine is is really, really simple. Uh, mine is Robbie Anderson, who a lot of people thought this offseason he was going to go and sign a big, big money contract, come in and be someone's you know savior, to be the one or to at least go to a team that really had a need of a downfield threat like the Eagles were often uh, you know, talked up, and, and maybe he wouldn't have been their one. Maybe Alshon is still considered the one there, but – you know, you pair him with a deep thrower, uh, with his speed and what his skill set is down downfield. I th I think that would be really nice. Instead, he goes to Carolina with the Panthers after that, which is great because you know Cam Newton will throw that ball down the. Oh wait, Cam Newton is no longer the quarterback. It's Teddy Bridgewater, who's always his entire NFL career, not just post injury but pre injury, has not been someone to push the ball down the field. And there are two other good wide receivers here. So he's not going to have a market share. I think Robbie Anderson is going to be a guy who has a handful of really good games next year because he is still talented. They're paying enough money. It was a two-year, $20 million deal. Uh, that's that's not nothing. Um, and so, you know, he's going to have some games, but I don't think you're going to be able to rely on him. I don't think you're going to be able to predict the games. Oh, so normal Robbie Anderson. Yeah, normal Robbie Anderson, but the hope. I mean, people that you you have Robbie Anderson in a dynasty league. Mike has yeah, him, I believe, in another one. It feels really stinky, and I know I'm going to play him eight weeks when he does nothing and bench him eight weeks when he blows up. 
but there was hope coming into yeah, everyone there was, was excited coming into free agency where he would land and now it's like oh man that stinks for fantasy so i i consider him a, a big loser he finally got to get away from adam gase and unfortunately goes to teddy bridgewater so i mean hopefully he throws the ball downfield and you know they they institute this collegiate offense but i just don't see him being a week in and week out starter hopefully yeah. uh, the, the word hopefully and then robbie anderson they have been combined for years now unfortunately and generally, I do. I, I I side with you, Jay. It's it's hard to because all the all the evidence points to Teddy Bridgewater not fully utilizing Robbie Anderson's skill set. I'm just hoping that Coach Ja can really convince him to buy into the system and start stretching the field. I I mean, I should add there are rumors about Curtis Samuel being traded. Yeah, I, so yes. that could be a he could not be a fit for what uh, Ja Rule wants to initiate in Carolina. That would at least give more market share opportunity for Robbie Anderson. You already know he's competing with CMC for some market share as well. So that would, I think, brighten my dynasty roster a little bit if Samuel moved on. But it's just about predictability. I mean, targets per game. What do you think Robbie Anderson's getting in the current makeup of this offense? A few. Four? I mean, yeah, that's yeah, a, four feels like four and a half is kind of what you're hoping for. And, and yeah, I mean, if Curtis Samuel goes, that, that number would go up because they're both great downfield speedsters. Um, I mean, honestly, the offense could be pretty darn good with CMC, DJ Moore, yes. Curtis Samuel, and and Robbie Anderson. Just not good for predicting which player is going to have a, you know, a, a consistent fantasy output. All right. Uh, I am going to select a couple of individuals out of the same backfield for my free agency loser category here and it's philip Lindsay and melvin gordon mm, and yeah. the math equation that I've, yeah. I've i've come up with is very complicated i don't want to get into all of the you know the <laughs> sine cosine a tangent all of that stuff but it basically breaks down to one plus one equals zero that's where i'm ending up here because yep. melvin gordon plus philip Lindsay, it's not a good formulation for this offense and you know I don't know what everybody's expecting from the Drew Locke experiment this year, but even the most optimistic of, of predictions does not afford me the ability to give Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay a seal of approval for fantasy owners in that backfield. There are, there's not even a security yet to Melvin Gordon being the bell cow. There is the assumption, there is the rumor, but there is not the proven uh, situation where we know that Gordon's going to get that opportunity. Lindsey has been so efficient and so effective in that offense. I don't understand why you would, you know, do anything to the detriment of of moving the football. And Lindsey has been able to help them do that. I just am. It's just gross. I don't like it. I don't like the fact that we had a free agent running back. You know, it's a position where you can't find a lot of reliability. And then you take a free agent and you put them with another guy that you could kind of count on. And now you've got two guys that you have question marks next to their name. So to me, Philip Lindsay and Melvin Gordon are both losers in terms of free agency. And it will be interesting. Like, like you're saying, we don't, we don't know who's going to have what role, but like, what if Philip Lindsay ends up as the goal line back? Oh like, yeah. Yeah. Like he was very successful. He had eight carries inside the five last year. He turned him into five touchdowns. Meanwhile, Melvin Gordon had, 13 carries inside the five turned him into six touchdowns. Like, and I know, I know offensive line and all those things play into things, but f like the numbers are the numbers. Philip Lindsay was a very successful goal line back and Melvin Gordon was not. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a very difficult situation to know where to invest on either of those players in the draft. Ugh. And it might be something where you just need to take the lower value or I mean the lower sure. draft capital option if you want to buy into that backfield and it's not and that'll be Lindsay because gordon's going to go higher for the potential yeah, yeah and, and i think i think you 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 uh you crafted the narrative right when you're talking about drew lock you know running backs usually not always but usually perform better on you know teams that win ga more games that that score more points i mean the, you know when you're ahead and you're uh keeping hey, drew lock was a winner last year man well, and, and so sure. I mean, if you want to buy in that Drew so Locke, Kyle is, Allen. If, if they're going to be a 10 win, you know, a 10 win team, the Denver Broncos, and you believe that, then that narrative is not going to stick for you. I, I don't believe that. I, I don't think that this is a, 
a nine or ten win team. And you know, I I just prefer if he, if he's going to be splitting anything, and then they're you know a, a bottom third team. That's not good. Yeah, yeah. All right, All right Mike. I'll jump in here. My biggest loser, he wasn't actually a free agent, but I'm still lumping it in because all of the news was breaking at the same time. It's Stephon Diggs going to Buffalo. Go, Jason shakes his head. I have no idea. I, I, I can't fathom how you think that the, that he won. He's I, go, I mean, he's I, going from one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the league to Josh Allen, who is not. He Josh Allen will will never be one of the most accurate quarterbacks. I'm not saying he can't win, but I'm saying he he will never be one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the league. And you have your your I see argument. no reason to bring Josh Allen into this. <laughs> He's, and you're like you're like you you are sad for Robbie Anderson because you're bringing up the market share for the other players. Meanwhile, Stephon Diggs goes to a team where two wide receivers had over twenty percent of the market share and. Like the, and the pie is just so small. When you take a pie, you shrink it down. You you mix in some real bad pieces of inaccuracy. Like Stephon Diggs is going to be. Really, what if they're a team really that wants sad. to win on defense too? Yeah, it's it's. Oh, you I, mean I have the team to, he I happen just to, left from? I, mean, I happen. <laughs> yeah, it, which he wasn't a great consistent fantasy option right. for. Yeah, because he had to split with another wide receiver one in Adam Thielen. And, yes, he, they had two wide receivers with 20% market share. Adam but Thielen you wasn't even there half the year. Every single team has 100% market share combined with everybody, right? There, there was nobody to throw the ball to. Those two little guys were it, so they each got 20%. Now they've got Stephon Diggs. I think he's going from one team that doesn't want to pass the ball a lot to another team that doesn't want to pass the ball a lot. And he's going from a, a more accurate to a to a less accurate quarterback. I will grant you that. But he's going from a one B to a one. He's he's going to be the guy there. They traded the world for him. He is going to be. Well, and he's a monstrously sized six foot one ninety too, compared to the other guys they have. <laughs> That's true. I mean, he's he's going to be looking down at those other wide receivers in there. It's he's just, never felt bigger in his look, life. I love I love Bills. I love Stephon Diggs. I don't see the pathway to greatness here. I'm I'm afraid I do not. I, I guess so the way that I see it, I don't necessarily look at Stefan Diggs as a huge fantasy winner. But I don't see him as a fantasy loser here. Oh. But I, I get the narrative. If you don't believe Josh Allen could get him the ball, but I don't think Josh Allen has had a wide receiver like this and he's coming into, you know, year three. Uh see I, John Brown is good. John Brown's maybe not as good as Stefan Diggs, but John Brown is a good wide receiver. And Josh Allen's adjusted completion percentage when throwing down the field was 28.4%. So that's giving him the benefit of the doubt if a wide receiver didn't catch a well, catchable I, I, pass. I told you not to bring Josh Allen into this <laughs> I, I'm situation. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> he jumped from 52 to 58% completion, Mike. So uh, that, that's true. Moving on up. Okay. That's true. I think it, there'll be consistency problems with Diggs. He'll clearly have his good games. He'll have his big plays. But I don't see a big difference myself in what he'll do on Buffalo than what he did on Minnesota, which was be a frustrating fantasy asset at times. Yep. And Jason's I, just got kind of curmudgeonly faced and <laughs> disappointed and discouraged. Look, and John Brown was the wide receiver twenty last year, and is he's not in the same class as Stephon Diggs, and that was with Josh Allen. Josh Allen, another year giving a much more focused effort towards his wide receiver one than he gave towards John Brown. He can obviously support a wide receiver 20. How is that? I mean, Stefan Diggs Maybe. is a, a top 15 wide receiver next year. Like, no, hmm? like, I'll, John, I'll give John you, Brown I'll give you disappearing. I'll give you 17 wide receiver 17. And if he's wide receiver 17, you're going to be disappointed with where that, you draft him, that you drafted Stefan Diggs. Uh, Stephon Diggs was wide receiver 21 this year, just so you know. Yeah. So he's a fancy loser. He's Aww. a fancy loser going from 21 to 17. Boom, we're talking, drop. We're, we're talking high end, the high end <laughs> range of outcome. Um, we haven't, I mean, we've been fairly, if, if you're a sports fan, I'm going to use the word fairly, distracted by the joy of receiving DeAndre Hopkins. But we have not, another loser <laughs> in this free agent period has clearly been Deshaun Watson. Correct. And he's been one of the bigger, you know, best options at quarterback for fantasy owners. What is but, the real out? Oh, okay. But Andy. 
Oh, okay, voice of public opinion, yes. He got Randall Cobb. <laughs> oh, gosh. First of all, that was the worst Vopo you've ever done. Uh, Second of all... <laughs> it's hard to Vopo and laugh. Um, no, it's a, it's a huge problem. I mean, Randall Cobb does not solve the uh, DeAndre Hopkins problem. Yeah, I was going to ask the question. Problem. Does, does, now, does Watson run more now? Because if because if the answer is now he fixes he he makes up for that uh, for those yards by running like then Watson's actually a better fantasy option. Yeah, I, d- I don't know if he'll be able to make it up. I think right now you're looking at a situation where I mean even Deshaun Watson in his social media has been mm. oh what, I don't, questioning his circumstances. I don't know how many people got to see it. I was able to screenshot it and share it the, the day that the Hopkins trade happened somebody i think one of the another player was with watson and snapped a facial reaction of him and his face was a sour puss as it rightly should be he was mad and i mean that tweet got pulled immediately after this but you're just like that is that those are raw emotions of a hurt man right now no it's it's a it's a big problem and you know projecting him uh, to stay consistent, it's going to be a tough thing because he's going to go pretty high in draft still just based on what he did yeah. last year. Kirk I'm, Cousins I'm, I'm loses imagine. Stephon Diggs. I imagine Jason finds Kirk Cousins to be the biggest loser of all. <laughs> <laughs> I I think Kirk Cousins will be absolutely fine in the sense that, you know... Well, he's got Tajay Sharp now. So. <laughs> right. Uh, I, I mean, this is a team that doesn't want to throw a lot, and so... With Adam Thielen there, hopefully for 16 games. I mean, it, you know, the depth matters, and he could become a big loser. If you lose Thielen, then I don't think you can overcome. But in the meantime, you know, I, I he's definitely not a fantasy quarterback that I'm all about, but I, I don't know that it's the end of the world for him. He's still a good quarterback, and he's got a great wide receiver one. Kirk Cousins not getting not getting near my team. Yeah, yeah I mean fair. that's what I said. I'm not sure I like him for fantasy. He's not yeah. not on my radar. There's about probably I'm I'm guessing he'll be in my 20s. So plenty of quarterbacks I take over him. Some wideouts that might make your fantasy football free agency loser list. Curtis Samuel. We just talked about his circumstance. Obviously Robbie coming in on a on a big contract. Trade rumors. Christian Kirk. You know was yeah. supposed to be the one, not the one at all. Hopkins is there. Uh, I still think there's opportunity if that offense is what you said, Mike. If it can be a top 12 type of scoring offense, Kirk should have a lot of opportunity. Fitzgerald does not consume a large amount of the yardage share in Arizona. Right. Julian Edelman, losing Tom, o- Bra- losing Tom Brady overreacting. is not good. Yeah, no, I, I, you have to, you know, winners and losers of free agency. Yes, he was a loser, but I'm still choosing not to overreact. What about Keenan Allen and Mike Williams dealing with the lack of uh. rivers now? Because I mean, I we're looking, we're staring down rookies or Tyrod Taylor. It's it's going to be both. I mean, that's my projection. Like you know, Tyrod Taylor will start for, well, I don't know, four to six games, and then they'll go to the rookie. So it's it's troubling times for the fantasy purposes of Keenan and, and Mike. I, th- I think it's a huge downgrade, and it's a huge downgrade for fantasy because both of those guys are there. If it was one guy and they could focus, you know, a la Sammy Watkins when Tyrod was the guy giving them outlandish market shares, but both players are really good. And I I think that the passing volume is going to come down so, so much in Los Angeles for the chargers that the, the, they're both going to take a, a pretty sizable hit. And Hunter Henry should be included into that mix yeah. as well. Right. Sure. Because he's had that rapport with rivers and yes, they're bringing him back, but like, do you, do you like Henry more than those guys that you brought up as winners earlier? Man, Hurst that's and, a, Hurst and that's Doyle. That's a really good question. Uh, you know, feels I, like I'm, by default I do, but I'm not sure it'll materialize that way if we end up with a rookie behind. Yeah, th- this is why we stack guys out as a team and every single individual on the team because instinctually I say, yeah, of course I I, I like him better than Doyle and better than Hayden Hurst. But then when I step back and you know look at the ultimate draft kit and see how every single player was statted out and team totals and market shares and things that actually add up. To reality, I could very well see him lower in the list. Uh, so that'll be an interesting name to look at post June one when we when we launch the the ultimate draft kit. All right. Uh, by the way, we have a top ten running backs episode coming up. Oof, yes. So um, that's I, Thursday. 
I would also, I just, I had this analogy that I wanted to paint a picture for everyone out there. Oh boy. Imagine Aaron Rodgers and his face when he found out that Devontae Adams was traded for Devonta Freeman. <laughs> Imagine what his face would have been like oh. if that happened. Because oh my that's gosh. exactly, that is the exact situation. A team that needed to cut a running back <laughs> to save money goes out and gets a superstar. That's unthinkable. And do you guys remember that we got the Andre Hopkins? <laughs> yeah, baby! <laughs> I was oh. so lost. You know what? That, you were breaking down, but you are, that is, that that's is 100% what happened. right. That's what happened. His face would not have been happy. Oh he would have. He would have quit. He would have just retired. Oh. All right, we got time for a little bit of mailbag. Let's do it. Uh. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. All right, let's weigh in here. If you have a question, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button or dial our voicemail hotline three zero two four six four T F F B. Dynasty trade question from Jack in Boston. He says, "I've been offered." Drew Brees, we we're just talking about him. Drew Brees and a fourth rounder for a second rounder. I need a quarterback, but not sure how valuable a second rounder is in comparison to Drew Brees. Mm. Standard scoring, dynasty rules. Ooh, mm. okay, that that's tough. As we, so I guess let's start the conversation here. Is Drew Brees? I know he, the contract was two years. Am I correct in yeah, I mean. That? It yep. could be you're saying like a Kurt Warner signed a two year yes. deal and then retired does after Drew one. Does Drew Brees play two years, or does uh, he I would, play one? I would say that's fifty fifty. And if you're going to make a deal for Drew Brees, if you're going to go get him, you have to look at it from a managerial standpoint on your roster that you you get him for a year, so that you're not caught unexpected if he retires at the end of the year. If he doesn't, then that's a bonus. Now that could still be worth it because you know a, a a second rounder their hit rate is very low. So if you end up drafting a an Andy Isabella type um, in in your fantasy draft, that's worth nothing. And you know that Drew Brees is going to be worth quite a lot. It, I think it's just a matter of your team makeup, right? Like, are you a championship contender? That's the answer so, for me. If you're contending this year, do the deal. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would take a look around, though. Just see, you because you might be able to get a another quarterback who can be a top 12 guy and not have to pay as much. Like a Matt Ryan I yeah. still got a I've still got a sad face because you mentioned Andy Isabella, one of oh, my the King of the Jets one of, one of my draft picks from last year's dynasty team. King uh, of the I would Jets. put him in the free agent loser list, unfortunately. Yeah. Hey, I had a dynasty <laughs> question come in from uh, Michael and he was asking, Would you rather have Chris Carson in a twenty twenty one first round pick or Derrick Henry? Chris so Carson a 20, in a twenty twenty one first round pick. Right. Yeah. Okay. Or Derrick Henry. And to me, it was the same answer. It was if you're competing this year, Derrick Henry offers you a lot of uh, league-winning ability, but you have to make a lot of decisions on Chris Carson ahead I feel like of the either season. way, I'll take Henry. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, Chris Carson, we don't know what his value is going to be. I We have to assume that the Seahawks, based on the health of their running back core, are going to add another running back, which means if Chris Carson comes back and he's healthy, he still might not be – what he was for fantasy, and would you trade a 2021 first, assuming you're a good team, so it's not, you know, you're not expecting it to be, you know, the 101, a 2021 first for Derrick Henry right now? Because I, I would. Yes. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, I, I would take the Henry side of this. How high would you go this year's first round pick for Derrick Henry? Hmm. <laughs> It certainly wouldn't. <laughs> Somebody asked about 107 this year for yeah, Derrick Henry. That's, that's I think where, I would give up 107 for Derrick Henry. Yeah, I agree. That's that's about where it's getting really interesting. I mean, we'll know so much more after the draft. Whenever there's conversations like that, it's so hard to know because uh, a lot of people go to the perfect matches, and all of a sudden the 107 looks great. If not, then you know. You're what if you okay. don't get the luxury of waiting for the draft, and you if have you to don't, decide right take, now? I would take Derrick Henry. Yeah, I, I think I would take Henry because I mean you're you're insinuating you need a running back. Yeah, fifteen hundred and forty yards, sixteen touchdowns. Right, but at one hundred and seven, like there won't be one of the seemingly surefire running backs available at one hundred and seven. Yeah, you're you're passing the opportunity to get one of these great wide receivers, but if your team needs that running back, then yes, I would I would take Henry. 
And you want right, to know well, the great part about Henry being on the franchise tag? It's still a contract year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he has to be great if he wants to get paid next year. Yeah. All right, one more. A keep trade cut. You guys ready? Yep. Here's what you have to do. Keep trade cut. The Cardinals winning Super Bowl 55. 55! Oh! Or... You or, win. You win the league of record each of the next five years. So a five-year run in the oh, league of five record. Five years in a row. All right. Or you never lose in foosball again. All right, foosball's out the window because I yep. don't lose regardless. Uh, yeah, it's mm. out the window too. I I like competition as much fun as it is to win everything. I would love to have good competition and. It's win the every Cardinals. Game. I'm keeping the Cardinals yes, winning I'm Super Bowl. The Cardinals too. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, tough. It's 55. Sammy Hagar is gonna be there. I mean, <laughs> in attendance, he'll be like he'll be watching the game. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna uh, take the cards as well. Yeah. yeah. Although, man, the amount a five of floating a, fi a five year run would just be unbelievable. Mike oh. and I almost had a five year run of playing against each other. Yes, that's you true. Remember how great run. that was, Jason? I do remember how great that was. <laughs> <laughs> And it just depended on who you were. I haven't even checked in with Brooks today. I don't know if he is. Is your microphone on, Brooks? Are you there? Oh, I'm here. Okay. Are you doing all right? I, I'm doing I don't great. even. I don't even see you on the video. You're producing the show. We appreciate that. We've managed to work out all of the remote recording stuff with limited disruption, thanks to Al Borland and Brooks taking care of things. But are you hanging in there with all this madness? Oh yeah, you know it. <laughs> All right. It's, Brooks's answer to everything is you know it. I love, I love it. it. Doing great. I love Michael Keaton. <laughs> Thanks for checking. All right. That is it. Like I said, early top 10 NFL running back or uh, fantasy running back show on Thursday. Make sure you tune in and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Stay safe, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.